Um, so the topic today is leveling up your app economy. Uh, and if, if you all are not uh, aware or uh, don't know of Ad Colony, we are a mobile video ad platform, um, part of the Opera Media Works uh, family. Um, and so today when I'm talking through the, the discussion, um, most of my references will be towards mobile video. Um, and for most of our, our partners, it's uh, rewarded video. So uh, if at any point in time it's unclear, it's usually rewarded video. So in the past, uh, this presentation has really been about diving into, uh, into apps and showing different integrations and how, um, and how to, to set up integrations to maximize uh, monetizations within, within your game. Uh, but I've, having, I've been having enough conversations lately that there's a lot of things that are, are coming up that I think are good building blocks before you even go into that. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is switch it up a little bit and uh, talk a little bit about some of the things um, that you should be thinking about even before you get into setting up an ad zone in your game. Um, and so really the, the topics I'm going to go through here, um, you know, strategic rationale, why does video monetization make sense? Understanding the players is maybe you know, self-evident, but uh, you know, a lot of times we're talking with publishers and they, they forget that there's the ad network on the other side of the table that has a, a goal and a motivation in mind. Um, walk through some of the KPIs that when we sit down with our publishers, um, you know, we're walking through and trying to understand how they're, how they're maximizing these KPIs. And then do a little bit around the, the in-game best practices and, and how to think about setting up uh, ad zones within your game. So jumping in, because we only have 20 minutes. Um, you know, so when it comes to thinking about video monetization, um, the key is that it really does diversify and helps maximize your revenue streams. Uh, in, in gaming, there's really only a, several different ways to, to monetize your game. You've got subscriptions and you have uh, you know, direct solds. Um, those are great if you can do them, but a lot of times those aren't uh, you know, the most um, uh, you know, easiest to implement, and so you, a lot of folks are turning to IAP, which is one of the riskiest ways to monetize your game. And so your revenue, having ad revenue as part of that really does help uh, de-risk some of the, the, the challenges that publishers face with, with in-app purchases. Um, I think we, you hear it all the time, you know, only one to three percent, maybe five percent of your audience actually monetizes. So um, I won't say that it monetizes all the other uh, players on your, on your game, but it certainly does um, help monetize more of your audience. And the key here is that you're leaving money on the table. Unity just had a, a, great, uh, a great report that came out that uh, said that over 70% of players now look to video as a way to pay for the game. 60, over 60% 60 of them are actively engaged with rewarded video. And so players are there and they want to engage with you. And so if you're not thinking of this as a way to, to monetize your game, you're definitely leaving money on the table. And one of the ones that I really love is, is from a strategic standpoint, you may not have your monetization strategy laid out at first, or it may not be you know, clicking as you think it should when the game starts. And advertising really does provide a way for you to fund development while you're trying to work out the kinks in the game, work out your monetization strategy, so that when the time comes when you do get everything worked out, you haven't lost, you haven't lost the, the, the development budget. You don't have a publisher who's potentially shutting down the game because you haven't worked it out. So it really does provide ongoing development for, as you're trying to work out when you first launch the game. And then I think one of the key things for us at Ad Colony that we really stress is don't think about rewarded video as a monetization tool. It's really a tool for you to incentivize core game loops. You want players to do certain activities. You want to engage them. You want them to continue on a session. And rewarded videos are really a great way to, to really f drive users to do, to do those actions. So I think one of the other things that's key to understand is knowing the ecosystem. And this may be self-evident, uh, self but you know, on the left side of the, of the chart, you have the, the, the capital coming into the system. You have the brand advertisers. You have performance advertisers. You have DSPs, which are at, you know, you know, aggregates of, of ad networks. And they're really looking, you know, they're bringing capital to the market, to spend to the market, and looking for, uh, you know, for certain returns. Uh, on the right side, you have the publishers, and what they bring into the, into the ecosystem is the users. And in the middle, you have the ad networks. 
And so within the ad networks, so you have folks like myself on the publishing side, and all we're trying to do is make as much money for the publishers as possible. We have a, a, a counterpart on the performance marketing side, and all they're trying to do is make sure that advertisers are maximizing their spend at the lowest cost possible. And so in some senses, we are at opposites. You know, there's, there's confrontation because they're trying to keep costs low, and we're trying to make them spend as much as possible. And that's really where the technology within ad networks really comes into play making sure that there's a, a happy balance, sort of a market making, if you will, where you know, the advertisers are getting what they need and the publishers are getting the revenues that they need. So keeping that in mind, I think the key things to keep in mind here is ad networks are not ATMs. It's not something that you plug into and that we just hand over cash. We are beholden to the advertisers who have... So the, the advertisers are, are driving the business and they want a certain return, whether it's a reach, if it's a brand, um, if it's users, in some cases it could be down to the LTV level, but at the end of the day they're looking for a return on their investment or their ad spend. Now that doesn't mean that the publishers you know, just can, you know, don't have any, any ability to influence the system. There's certainly a lot of things that we'll talk about that you can do to drive the users that the advertisers want. So I think it's just important to understand the case that it's not a plug and play environment. Publishers, you know, oftentimes come to us and they try and maximize the return by switching between ad networks, and that's not necessarily the best thing um, because it takes time for for the um, for the ad network to actually uh, optimize to get to the point where they're they're providing the uh, the returns that the, the the publishers want. But the publishers can do things to influence that. So, kind of switching switching gears a little bit, I I thought it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about the KPIs that we look at, um, and when we sit down with publishers, you know, there. Are, you know, whether it's a review of how the game's going or if sometimes they're, they're not getting the, the ECPMs that they think they should be getting or the earnings that they're getting, these are the things that we look at. So I thought I would just go through there. Now, um, the numbers that you see up here, I, I took a snapshot of our top 1,000 publishers on our system. I thought it'd be interesting just, just to throw those up as, as a benchmark. Um, these are global numbers, so um, it includes, you know, the spectrum of, of potential... Uh, of potential impressions, and I think uh, the key here is that if you think about tier one, there's going to be substantially higher of these, and so just keep that in mind. So the key thing here is uh, daily active users, and this is really where uh, you know the the publishers start with um, bringing folks into our network, and this is really ad daily active users, and what that means is it doesn't match necessarily the, the daily active users for your game. These are the folks that have initialized our SDK that we can see, and it, it's usually lower than what you get on the platform, unless you initialize everybody. And so that's the first thing we look at, and having a healthy DAU obviously is the top of the funnel, and that really drives sort of where you can get to um, with, uh, with, your, with, your, uh, with your KPIs. And just to point out that this is really the KPIs on the publisher side, and these are the things that you, as a publisher, have direct influence over. So use rate is probably one of the most important stats that we look at. And what use rate is, is your daily unique viewers divided by your daily active users. And so this is, of the daily active users that you have in the system, how many of them actually see ads? And so that's a key number. And really what that reflects is your ability to set up ad zones, drive users to click, install, that's all reflected in use rate to get to that daily unique viewer. And then once you have that daily unique viewer, how many ads can you or impressions can you show to them a day? You know, on average, we're showing three, so you would take that daily unique viewer and multiply it by three, and that gets you to your impressions per day. And that's really, uh, going back to the slide that we saw a couple, uh, uh, two, two slides ago, that's the users that you're bringing into that ad network. So on the ad network side, what we really are focused on are these three metrics. So first is fill rate. Now that we've got impressions coming in, you know, how do we get our system to provide uh, the most campaigns into, you, into those impressions? And so fill rate is, is key for us. Um, and it really reflects our ability to, on the engine side to match uh, campaigns against, against your inventory. And then for certain campaigns, uh, and those run the gamut, but for more and more uh, on the performance side, it's really CPI. How many installs are you getting for, for, the, for the advertiser? And so install rate for us is a very key metric in terms of our ability to get um, past just filling the impression, but actually creating an action from that. Um, and so that actually influences eCPM. So the more installs you get, the higher eCPMs. Uh, and that's obviously important to us and a reflection of our ability uh, to, to, to generate pricing around your, your impressions. 
The key thing to think about here, though, with eCPMs, and we hear this a lot, is everyone compares, you know, what eCPM are you getting on this network and what you know, are, you, are you getting on that network? And really the thing to think about, it's, it's kind of like a stock price. And if you look at a stock price for, for Google versus a stock price for, for Apple, and, I, and one is, let's say Google is 400 and Apple is 100, you know, does that mean that Google is uh, more valuable than Apple? Um, and, the, and the answer is, is no, because you have to take into account the, the shares that are outstanding. So very similar to ECPM, that's just a number as part of the end equation. And really what the impressions that you're driving, the ECPMs are what we're driving, get to is what we call ARPDOV, the average revenue per daily unique viewer. And this is really what matters because this takes into account your impressions and it takes into account earnings or your ECPM to get to really what's, what's an earnings number. So uh, this number is one that you can compare against your ARPDAO. So if you think about IAP driving ARPDAO, um, you know, maybe you're getting seven cents in ARPDAO or 10 cents. You know, this is a number that you can actually add together with that to get to sort of what your total revenue is across your daily active users. So that's sort of the, the setup and, and where the conversations I'm having, it's really important to understand these because as you think about implementing uh, rewarded video or video monetization, knowing what these drivers are can help you structure how you implement them in the game. So when we talk to our publishers, we usually talk about six steps to leveling up their monetization, and I'll go through each one of these, but essentially you want to make sure that, uh, that you're planning for it, you're testing it, uh, you're analyzing it, uh, and that you're making sure that the, uh, that the rewards that you're giving make sense given, given what your game is. So just diving in, the first thing we, you know, we really want to stress is if, if at all possible, think about ad monetization very early on in the game. Don't leave it till the game launches because you, you'll miss some critical steps and, and really driving some, some key points to, to, to implement good uh, integrations in the game. So plan on it early, you know, think about the forecast. So if you think about the, the metrics that I just mentioned, Think about what you want to do in terms of revenue, and then you can back into what those numbers need to be, whether it's uh, you know, your, your use rate or your uh, DUV. And then what you can allow your teams is now strategize. How are you going to hit those numbers? And, and finally, get the teams to commit. So you know, if everyone's on board, these are the numbers we need to hit, and the, the development team knows them, and it's, it's a great opportunity now for everyone to be working towards that goal. So along those lines, um, take every opportunity to test your ad monetization early on in the process. So if it's uh, early access, or maybe it's beta, or maybe it's uh, you know, a, a soft launch, uh, it's a great opportunity to test your ad zones and work out any issues you have. Maybe it's the placement, maybe it's the, the reward, um, and there's opportunities to, to gather some, some, some KPIs during that phase, and then you can compare them when you, go, when you scale it to, to a larger audience, what those might look like and how that could impact your ARP DAO. So once you have that, uh, you know, we really do recommend segmenting your, your players. Um, not every player should or needs to get video monetization. Don't assume that paying players don't want uh, video ads. In fact, we get a lot of publishers that are telling us that their paying players are actually annoyed that they've paid money and now they can't get access to, to free items through videos. Um, but I think it's key for, you know, for any part of your business, whether it's the ad monetization or if it's IAP, is to start segmenting your players so that you know, given certain circumstances, uh, what you can do with certain segments, whether if you need to scale and be aggressive, um, whether you need to, to, to scale down and not show ads to certain players. Um, but it's, it's important to managing um, the aspects of your game and, and which users are seeing uh, ad monetization. And so key is when you think about what, you know, what kind of ad do I want to provide, you want to make sure that when you do a rewarded video that it's immediate, that the player gets an understanding of, of what he's got immediately in the game. Make sure that it's visible, that there's some um, sort of connection between watching the video and then seeing it, whether it's an item or a consumable or something in the game. Um, if you have the ability, make it unique. Um, the more that you can have unique items attached to videos, the more that, that watching that video has meaning to the player and the more that they're going to engage with it long term. Uh, and then making it engaging. So the extent that it's part of the game and it's part of the functions that you've built in, um, the more it feels sort of natural to the gameplay. Now that you're thinking about what you're giving, uh, the key here is, is don't just give the same thing over and over. It becomes monotonous. Um, people will lose interest. And so there's an opportunity for you as a publisher uh, to, to work with different rewards. 
Um, in the case of something like hard currency, it's an opportunity to give players a sense of what it's like to, to be in that premium level, to have something that they'd have to pay for um, and give them that sense of, of what it's like to have that item in the game. Um, you know, consumables, those are great ways to match uh, your ad monetization or that tool for, in, uh, for inciting an activity within a player against something in your game. So, for example, if players are not getting past level four, you've got a huge drop off rate, you know, there's a cons maybe there's a consumable item that you can give uh, some sort of energy pack or maybe a potion that helps them get through level four to level five. And so you can start matching, you know, sort of that tool of what rewarded video offers against, uh, you know, different, me different metrics that you're seeing on the, on the game mechanic side. Content gates are another great way to, uh, to use rewarded video. So if you have something like an endless runner at the end of the game, or at the end of a play session, you know, there's the, do you want to continue? And maybe they don't have enough energy. It's a great time to put in a rewarded video. You know, you extend the play session one, you know, one play longer. Um, you get them to stay in the game a little bit longer. And each time you get them to stay, the more attached they get to it, potentially the more opportunities there are to drive them to the IAP side of the business. Um, and so when you think about integrations, now we're actually, we've got the rewards, we've got the strategy, now we want to get them into the game. You know, the more that you can make um, the rewarded video feel a part of the game, um, the more impactful it's going to be. So contextual fit is very important. Making clear cl clues so that, the, so that the player knows exactly what he's getting, where he needs to go to get it. Making it feel a part of the game, so native, you know, to, to uh, use that term. Um, and then always having something in the store. So it's a good spot if they always go to the store because they know they can at least get something free. Guess what, they're in the store already. Maybe there's an opportunity for them to, to make a purchase at that time as well. So one of the things that, uh, one of the games that we really like and we think have done a good job um, is Angry Bird Go. And they really thought of this from the beginning. Advertising was going to be their core, um, their core monetization uh, medium. Um, and they thought long and hard about how they were going to integrate it naturally into the game. So if you don't know, this is a, a racing game based on the Angry Birds um, franchise. And just to give you an example, this is what it looks like when you first get into the game. So you'll see that the ad units, it's very clear. Um, you know, it's engaging, it's, part, it's seamless as part of the game. You know, there is a purchasable item with the wrench. There's also a, um, a branded ad targeted, um, targeted and target in there. Um, and then you've got the opportunity now to watch video. And it's very clear what, what I need to do. I have the video if I want to get the, uh, the slingshot. I can watch a video if I want to get the fan. So let's say I, I click on the video and I and I, for the slingshot, you'll see immediately the slingshot appears. So it's immediate, it's clear, and I, I get a sense of exactly what that video got me in the game. Let's say I, I want to watch the video, 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 and now I see the fan. And now you can't tell this because, you know, it's a static image, but um, in the game, you know, the leaves are blowing off the fan. You get a sense of the power. So now I've gone from being sort of a you know, just on a regular racetrack to now I have something powerful that those videos have, have, have provided me. So just to show you again, this is what it was before, and it's very impactful and immediate here. So this is a really good use of all the tools um, of rewarded video that we just went through um, just in, in sort of the one startup screen. So I'm almost done with times, but as a bonus tip, one of the things that I thought would be interesting to talk about is uh, using video for something else. So instead of using video necessarily to, to advertise brands or uh, performance marketing, um, now there's a way or you can start thinking about using video to merchandise items in your store. And so one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of publishers and developers will create an item store. Um, they'll have a, the item, they'll have a static image, and they'll have a brief text of what it does. And so there's really not a lot of interaction with that item. You just have to guess what it does. Well, guess what? Video is a great way to now highlight the, the cool things that item does. So if it's an area of effect spell, or maybe it's an OP um, you know, sword, or if you're selling heroes, you can see them at level 20 because that's the level where they really have special powers. Um, and so it's a way to highlight those, and the user immediately can see the sight, the sound, they get emotionally attached to that item. You know, if they're struggling in a certain part of the game with a boss fight, they're like, oh, I can see where that actually helps me within the game. And so they understand immediately how that item or, will, will impact their gameplay. So as an example, um, one of the things that, uh, you know, one of the, the early beta testers for us on this is Hungry Sark Evolution. Um, very popular game, um, uses 
uh, advertising quite frequently. The, uh, to point out here, just to show you, so on the, on the left screen, you see um, sort of the shark. And before you go into gameplay, um, you've got the ability to buff up your character with these different items. And so I picked uh, the missile launcher. And if you look on the right now, you come in, and there you still have the static image and the text, but you have the opportunity to click on a preview now to see what, see what that provides you. So just to finish up, because I've got the zero showing, let me just show you an example. And the key here is you can, so here you're going in, you're, you're about to play, and before I play, I'm gonna level up. Well, guess what? I wanna take a look at the, I believe it's the, the laser. So now I have enough coins, if I really wanted this, I could buy it, so let's see what it looks like. I can see it in action. That looked pretty cool, I think I'm gonna buy it now, so I'll just go ahead and confirm, and it immediately deducts from my account. And now if I go in and take a look at the jetpack, um, seems cool, let's see what it does. Yeah, definitely, definitely want that, that's pretty cool. So I have gems, but I don't have a nut, so it drops me into the store, so now I can purchase those items uh, as I normally would, go ahead and buy it from the store, and it's put those into, into my, and you can see immediately on the, on the shark, you can see it on the, on the shark, both the laser and the jetpack. So now I'm gonna check the vortex, because this is pretty cool. And that's, that's interesting. I don't know if I need it now. Um, so maybe, you know, and I don't have 120,000 coins, so I'm just going to wait. But you know what? I know what it is. I know what it does. So next time when I come back to that, I can actually I have a, a memory of what it does. And now I'm in the game, and I can actually take my, you know, my, my shark in and get that, get that girl right there. Okay, good. Get that one too. All right, so a little, little bit violent, but that's the nature of the game. But that jetpack really helps, so. Uh, and that's it. Any questions? Um, so mainly, like you, uh, you know, at the start of the talk, we're talking about game mechanics. Right? Yeah, that uh, you shouldn't just like take ads and put it there, and, and then after that, you went to the old plan on on what to look. So, what would be like your recommendation for people that you know just starts and and has its game or are thinking about the game game mechanic in the game? So we saw a lot about items, but is there any other things? that you should think of uh, in terms of the process of designing the game of how to include ads in there. So more or less, it's um, uh, for people that, want that, that are into their game design process and making yeah. their game mechanics, uh, what they should think of uh, uh, when they implement ads that could be other things than items as well for rewards. Uh, other things besides items? Exactly. Well, I mean, so, so typically, you know, that's, that's rewarded video, but there's other opportunities where if you, if you don't have items within the game, um, there's opportunities to use uh, interstitial video. Again, at Ad Colony, that's what we use. Obviously, there's, you know, you can use banners and, and pop-ups, but um, from our practice and, and sort of our mentality, it's very much on rewarded video because that's proven to be the, the you know, sort of the largest eCPMs and the, and the biggest uh, opportunities to monetize within the game. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, just because uh, uh, mainly it's based around in-app, you know, in-app purchases within the game, and that's sort of what the focus is. So it could be also like uh, resources or... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I see what yeah. you're saying. Well, that, that comes down to sort of the, 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 when you think about currencies, you think about consumables, uh, it could be energy packs, you know, anything that you have that, that provides uh, something useful to a player within the game is something that you can align a rewarded video against. Also helping other friends. That's really helpful. <laughs> um, hi, thank you for the nice uh, presentation. Uh, I'm just curious, besides gaming apps, is there any other way we could use the reward of video as with other app categories? If, if yes, could you share us any specific We've, we've, we've um, thought case about studies? that. Yeah, and, and it, it depends on, it obviously depends on, on the app, but if there's loyalty programs, um, if there's ways that you, anything that you have something where you accumulate um, there's opportunities to apply rewarded to that. So um, if you think about um, mileage programs, you know, there could be a way to watch a video get more miles into your program. And so if you have an app that has sort of that mechanic within it, um, there's, there's ways to use it. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Big round of applause.